Muscle morons, welcome back to the Good Guys Podcast, the number one podcast in the world with two uh, Jewish hosts with BMIs over 30 and very short hair. <laughs> yes, it's too short, right? It's too short. No, you're. Uh, first of all, just all I want to say is you're copying me. It's unbelievably short. It's did like, I inspire this? You didn't. And like, let me just explain. Like, why as a species, when we watch our barber cutting our hair too short, why as a species, when a masseuse is rubbing us just a little bit too hard, and why as a species, when we get something that we don't like at a restaurant and the waiter or waitress comes over and says, how's your food? We say, great. Like, what is it? that we're so afraid of confrontation. I could have easily just said, hey, you know, I think you're cutting it a little bit short. And then I wouldn't have been left with something that feels like a pre-summer haircut. It's 40 degrees outside and pouring rain. I need more hair. Like if he, if this happened first week of May, okay, okay, no problem. At least I'll feel the breeze in my hair. It's okay. But being this short, cold, no good. Well, a couple of things. First, you are suffering from living in a place where the weather changes like the temperature of a mid 50s woman going through menopause. It's Secondly, unbelievable. Um, and I will pull this to the room in our dear, dear Marshall. I think you can't. Here's the problem with haircuts. I learned this. The first cut is the cut. The first snip is the snip. And then everything next is matching that first cut. So if the first cut is too short, you're aft, Marshall. As a middle part king, which they, <laughs> they, they haven't seen. Yeah, the first snip is very important, but there's two snips because it's middle parted. So the Ooh, first fair. two snips so, have so, to be on point. So maybe you go- Who, say, you who go, sings that song, The First Cut is the Deepest? And do you think it was about a haircut? <laughs> <laughs> Rod Stewart? First, the first cut is, cut the, is deep. the deepest. <laughs> Baby, Baby, I know. I know. It is. It's the deepest. Um, I agree that the first snip of a haircut can lead you astray, but I don't know. Like they're they're snipping away. They're slowly going shorter and shorter. I had an opportunity, needless to say, to not have my hair be this short, and I just let it happen. And it is what it is. I have a dimple. I didn't know that I had a dimple here. You have I a can head see dimple? I can see it. That's trauma. You have a divot How, in your head? But By the way, any chance that's cancer? Any chance that's cancer? That should be our next podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the any chance Jewish that's cancer? you've ever said. Any chance that's cancer? With It's about, it's like this big. It's not, it's, it's pretty small. It's a small little, it looked, it, it, oh, no, not dimple. I said dimple. I didn't mean dimple. I meant beauty mark. I meant ah. beauty mark. Ah. No, yeah, dimple. How would you? <laughs> mm -hmm. How would I you have you a dimple a in your dimple head? In your head, like you were walking around, like, <laughs> like, uh, like homegirl in poor things. <laughs> um, yeah, I found this dent that I haven't seen before. Once, when I was two, Bruce was practicing his <laughs> golf swing, and he kind of got me. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Uh, no, I mean, I think you're fine. There is like a. Uh, Let's look it up because why not? Everyone should know this. And by that, I mean anyone of the Jewish persuasion who's a bit of a hypochondriac. But signs of a cancerous mole. Yes. I, I think there's an acronym of things to look for. Um, but, oh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I know. Well, I know that it's not raised. I know that's a, that's a thing. Usually they need to be raised. Um, it's not. It, well, that's not only, only the thing, though. It's not always sweet baby raised. God. Okay. A, B, C, D, E is the rule okay. in help and helpful in remembering the warning signs of melanoma. Asymmetry, the shape of one half of the skin lesion does not match the other. Border, the edges are ragged, notched, uneven, or blurred. Color, shades of black, brown, and tan may be present. Diameter and evolving. Hmm. Now I have to look. So Otherwise, diameter, I'm not be we're pass. good. Evolving, Let's we see. wouldn't know. <laughs> Anyone who's not watching the pod right see. now, Let's just Ben see. is taking a selfie of his head lesion. I think it's fine. It looks symmetrical. Yeah. I don't see any jagged lines. It's a light, uh, I wouldn't call it pink. It's in the pink family. It's sort of pig colored. Pig colored. Maybe it's a skin and, tag. Uh, Maybe it's a super uh, sweet skin tag. And uh, it's ugly, and it's ugly. So um, 
Oof. Yeah, it is what it is. It is what it is. Wow, a lot, a lot's been revealed with this new haircut of yours. I'm so sorry. Yeah, no good. It's fine. It's fine. This is why I like to keep my hair longer. Long hair, you have less problems. You don't see the male pattern baldness. I have light, light stuff going on up top. Light stuff, light stuff. Nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. But when my hair's longer, you definitely can't tell. When it's shorter, a little more of the sun shines through. Um, look at my outfit right now. Am I in my like uncut uh, uh, uncut gems? Uncut gems. <laughs> <laughs> Am I in my like, <laughs> uncut gems era? Like 47th Street Diamond District era? Like, hold on, look. Okay. Okay, paid, paid shirt, paid shirt, Levi jeans, and my gold high necklace, very displayed. Look at this. I didn't even realize. You look fantastic. Thanks, babe. Wow. This is me now. Shout out, Paige. Marshall? Shout out, Paige. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks. I got to get Adam some like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when a gay man's not attracted to you, it really hurts. <laughs> No one said yeah. that. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, Marshall. Uh, uh, finally. So what else? So yeah, I'm. Yeah, this is this is where I'm at. I'm in my page life. I'm in my my uncut gems era, and I have a very important question for you. What are you doing for Easter, Ben? It's coming up. I know that we like hunt Easter bunnies, but like, is that like? Is that like code for Jews or like, what's the, what's the deal? You know, not everything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we'll probably paint some eggs. The way this I'm guy just kidding. talks. We'll, pay, we'll paint some eggs. I'm married to a wonderful Irish Catholic person <laughs> with Irish Catholic family. What are you doing for Easter, Josh? I would love to. Well, usually we do we do a nice. <laughs> let me lay this out. It's so funny because there is a speak pipe coming where a girl says, "I'd like you to give take a chance and try not to talk about food for the next ten minutes, good guys." Impossible, like, <laughs> impossible. Not Why would possible. we do that? Why? Why would we do that? Especially Easter. Easter, those chocolate covered eggs. Please, you those wanna... little those little peeps that they sell. Do you like the peeps? Okay, so uh, peeps are. They're just Bad. odd to me. I I, I don't yeah. know how they came up with it. Like sugar coated marshmallow. Yeah, yeah, agreed. In general, but I'm I'm not against the malo in any way. Like I'm a big I'm pro malo, and I don't care who hears it. Yeah, no, but I don't think that they're good. I think that the consistency also it's it's not a good marshmallow. Um, like I don't know who you like that marshmallow. No, it's not a good marshmallow. Let me hear your thoughts on the s'more. Thoughts? Love. I really? think it's incredibly messy. I certainly wish that there was an easier way to eat it. Mm. It's kind of like one of those Nutrigrain bars where you take a bite and all of a sudden you're drenched in granola. Like it's unavoidable that you're going to get a little chocolate on your shirt. You're probably going to burn your lip with the marshmallow. You're probably going to get graham cracker on you. Like there are issues with it. Mm. But when you get a good bite, it's fantastic. My problem with the s'more is that if I have one bite of a s'more, I'm having 16 Hershey bars. Like I yes. get a taste of that sweet Hershey's chocolate and all I want to do is eat the Hershey chocolate straight. The best part, the best part of the s'more, I'm sorry, is the Hershey's chocolate. Wow. A, a lot to take in there. <laughs> because to me, I think. <laughs> let's debrief. Yeah, no, let's, let's really dig in. Um, because I think the party Right, like the real wild card card there is it, it's a temperature play. We're 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 playing with temperature here, right? Because yes. you get that hot yes. marshmallow. That's also it's kissing, it's touching. It, there's a a relative heatness that's opening up. It's 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 like when you take a wine and you kind of like aerate it and you get all the yes. notes. It's bringing that Hershey to life. It's it's taking the chocolate on its back and saying. I'm going to carry you for a while, Hershey. I'm going to open yes. you up. Look, I know you are stressed out about your closet, right? You're like, how do I have so many clothes and nothing to wear? Because you're not buying the right stuff and you're overpaying and you don't have timeless pieces that literally could work now or 10 years from now. But that's where Quince comes in. They're going to upgrade your wardrobe with quality essentials, but at an unbeatable price. Now, they have these like timeless pieces that never go out of style, but the prices are crazy. Like 
Okay, so I just got this Mongolian cashmere crew neck that literally, I, you could probably wear it. Like the only time you wouldn't be able to wear it is between July and August. But 10 months out of the year, it's a little chilly at night. You throw it on, it's comfy, not too hot, not too light, perfect. And that Mongolian cashmere crew neck sweater is 50 bucks. Or they have iconic 100% leather jackets, uh, versatile flow knit, flow knit activewear. As we know, Ben, my co-host, loves active wear because he's got just formidable legs, really good up close. Anyway, Quince, they partner directly with top factories, so they cut out the middleman, and they only work with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices. So indulge in affordable luxury. Go to quince.com slash good guys for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash good guys to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash good guys. I just had a I just had a genius idea. They need to make a graham cracker scoop. A graham Same cracker more. scoop. A graham cracker scoop would solve this problem. Mm. Because you take a graham cracker, right, in the shape of a scoop so that it can hold the marshmallow. The marshmallow is piping hot. Wow. You put the piece of chocolate on it, cover it with another scoop, and all of a sudden you're in like a little uh, yeah. I don't know, it like formed like a log. Or, and now this is eat edible. This you can eat. I'm thinking this graham cracker looks like a graham sombrero. Yes. A yes. Like a graham cracker love. curious George's owner hat. Ooh, 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 that's good. Yes. Ooh. I love that. Ooh. ooh, that's good. But then, okay, then you also have a piece of graham cracker that is the exact size of the sombrero, but it's flat. Yes. And then all of a sudden you just have a fully filled sombrero. With marshmallows and chocolate. And all I have to say is bravo. Bravo. Who, I mean, this is a uh, uh, Dia de los Muertos play, if I've ever seen one. It is. Can somebody you imagine needs to commemorative do it. s'mores so, on the Day of the Dead? Somebody needs to do it. And it's funny that we naturally got here, but I was thinking from our last episode, the Allen Wrench. I spoke a lot about, I spoke passionately about the Allen Wrench. We did. There are many things like the Allen Wrench that need an upgrade that we just haven't upgraded yet. And one of those things is the s'more. That's right. I one agree. of those things is the s'more. The s'more What needs else needs an upgrade? What else needs an upgrade? Um, uh, you know, arguably everything. But uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> parking, parking tickets, I don't, I don't want your ticket. I'm not, I'm not pushing the button. Figure it out. Bill me. Take a picture of my license plate. I'll see you another time. Do you ever think to yourself, though, like, are we using the best that we have or are we just using what we're used to? For example, is the chair the ultimate thing for us to sit in? Is the fork the best way for us to eat food? I'm sure that these things are good. Mm. Are they the best? I don't know. Well, that's a Seinfeld bit, right? Like where he goes, uh, something to the effect of Asian countries really sticking with the chopsticks. <laughs> He's like, we've figured out a better way, you know? And yeah. it's true. Yeah. <laughs> but, but we did. But let me tell you, when I go to a restaurant, a Houston's, uh, uh, you know, a Hillstone mm. establishment, somewhere where you're going to get a nice sushi appetizer and they hand you those chopsticks, and then maybe you're following it with something that that's not an Asian flair, uh, a fried chicken sando perhaps maybe you're gonna have a salad i love keeping that those chopsticks and eating my salad with it i think it's better than a fork it definitely has to eat slower mm -hmm. and there's something to be said about eating slower the chopstick makes you really work for your meal yes you know and by the way if you have ever tried to eat sushi without chopsticks meal ruined ruined nuts you can't use a fork you'll have to use your hands it has to be hands that, you can't use a fork. It's totally nuts. That's right. No, that's it. That's an interesting. Yeah. If someone, if you were on a date and the person you're with, you have a beautiful, like spicy tuna and she takes it with, she stabs it with her fork, pops it in her mouth like a sushi lollipop. Do you go, I'm with a murderer? I leave. <laughs> I leave. I don't say a word. I get up and I leave. That's sick. Sick. Yes. It's like it. It's 
I don't even know what it is. It's like, it's not, it doesn't necessarily mean that she's a murderer. It just means that she doesn't belong in society. Right. She should be murdered. Yes. I, I love that this girl left us a speak pipe saying that we should stop talking about food. And that led us into a 10 minute <laughs> tangent on food. I know. It's like she knows <laughs> us or something. It's like she knows us or something. What else is a red flag? Okay. Uh, what else would be like on a first date, a bit of a red flag? Like real, like real, red, like, yes, eating sushi incorrectly. Let's not even call it incorrectly so we sound bougie. Like anyone stabbing a sushi roll with a fork scares me. Like use your hand or a chopstick. We're talking about at a restaurant, red flags, first date at a restaurant. Yeah, or whatever. Like just certain like things people could do. Rude to the waiter or waitress. Totally. Red flag. Not good. gone. No, no. If you're not nice, if you're not nice, no good. Absolutely no good. What I'm going to uh, let's table this. Let's let's really open it up to the three of us. What about if a person brings up their ex? Because for me, I feel like if there was something pertaining to the conversation and it was relevant and but you said it in a way that was like where you kind of rolled your eyes and said, well, actually, here here comes me bringing up my ex. Like if you're in on the joke, maybe it's OK. But if you just kind of say like, well, Aaron used to, and I got to go, who's Aaron? And you say, well, we were together 39 months. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks and three days and four hours. I don't like pretending that we don't have exes. That's kind of my, I don't know if that's a hot take or that's a, what what that is, but everyone, what well, most everyone does. Totally. So let's, if it's respectful and you're not saying how much, how in love you are with them still, then I think it's fair play. But like, so in too. what context would you bring up the ex where it would be necessary? Uh, okay, so I'm saying to you, where do you live? And you say, I live in, uh, you know, I, I live in Dumbo, Queens. And I'm like, oh, you're a bit of a hipster. And you go, well, my ex was. I'm looking for a new place. Sure. But that, so in that... <laughs> <laughs> in that specific example, they're, you're not close enough, right? Yet, like you're still getting to know each other. You don't even know where the person lives. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I think that in that situation, bringing up Dumbo Queens <laughs> and that your ex dragged you there is it's appropriate. Brooklyn, you fucking <laughs> Dumbo You Brooklyn. said Dumbo Queens. Did I say Queens? <laughs> yes, in Brooklyn. yes. I thought you were. Making, I thought you were making up a fictitious place. <laughs> yeah, my ex dragged me to Dumbo Queens. <laughs> <laughs> this is oh unhinged. <laughs> I think personally that there's no reason to bring up the ex ever. There isn't because it's always just like an extra line, like. Oh, why do you love this restaurant? You can just say, oh, I, I've eaten here with friends. It's delicious. I've been here before. You don't have to say, oh, yeah, me and my ex used to come here all the time. Unnecessary. Unnecessary. At least know who you're talking to. If they're very sensitive about this stuff, there's never a need to bring up the ex in particular. You could just say my friend. And then maybe if she pushes, uh, she will push. All right. I don't know. I don't know. I, I just think like, I agree with you. There's, that would be triggering, right? Because now there's like, um, there's a shadow over that place, right? Because you immediately go, well, now this can never be our place because it was their place, right? Yeah. I'm not sure I even want to go here anymore because it was their place. But like, if, if there's an opportunity where even like, if if you're talking about like oh you're you're eating indian food and you're like i love indian food actually like i went i was in india and i had this incredible dish blah 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 and so, and they go like oh like who'd you go with or like what was it or like my ex was indian so we spent a lot of time there you know what i mean like there's pertinent information that's relevant sure. to it that i think is unemotional and if the person takes offense to that i think they're fucking nuts <laughs> sure yes in that situation again and in the Dumbo Queens example, <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree with you. I agree with you. That said, it does depend heavily on how jealous your your current uh, girlfriend or, or wife or whatever it may be is. Because there are often times where I'll say, oh, uh, remember when we stayed at this uh, hotel in uh, 
Puerto Rico and Claudia will say, oh, it must have been must have been another girl. And it's like, no, it was you. You just don't remember. So I know that, like, if I actually brought something up, God, would she be upset? Is Turdy viciously jealous? Oh, yeah. It, jealous is the wrong word. She's just just protective. Protective. Well, that's yeah, a jealous. nice. Yeah, jealous. That, that's a, jealous. That's a nice jealous. spin cycle you put that through. Je- jealous um, protective. I, jealous protective. Which is interesting, too, because in theory, you guys met so young. I was going to say, like, any, like, oh, I, I ate at this restaurant with my ex. What was I, six? <laughs> right. Like, uh, <laughs> I went to Chuck E. Cheese with her. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Like, so, I, no, that, it, it doesn't it doesn't apply to me. We met so young. I, <laughs> I, yeah, I don't like, I mean, I think my wife knows of, like, a couple stories of, me and and you know anyone I used to date and like I know one or two of hers that I bring up and she hates it and I love 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 love, love, love it I'm like remember him I was like am I doing it like Andrew no I'm kidding but, <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. but like I, I I also like yeah I think like the possessive ownership nature of not not projecting that on anything or anyone or anything we've said, but like when people feel like I, I, it, if anyone's super jealous or doesn't want to talk about people's past in a respectful way, there seems to me a need to like to have possess possess the person that they're with with like an ownership. And I don't know, like I'm very accepting of the fact that like there was a huge life before hopefully there's not a huge life after and it, but in this life in this moment in this movie we are together we are the unit and you existed before me but this is the thing right now it's a very mature take is it to very it is yeah it's a very mature take hmm. like okay what if you and turds are 65 and you really bought up to each other like, you know, there's just something I never tried. And it's, you know, you're like, I've never slept with a Puerto Rican person. I don't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, I've always wanted to be with, a, you know, burly construction worker. At 65, do you honor each other and go, you know what? Life is short and you're mine. And I, th- I think so. Really? I think so. I think so. 65. I, th- again, this is taking into account that she's going to ask to be with a burly construction worker at 65. I highly doubt it. <laughs> and am I really going to say, you know, all of a sudden I really need that Puerto Rican flair? <laughs> I'm not sure. These, in this hypothetical situation, though, if one really felt that way, I think I would be okay with it. At 65. I think that saying yes gives you a greater opportunity for them not to do it anyways. I feel like that type of question is also really to like get a rise. There's no situation where Claudia says, hey, you know, thinking about fucking, fucking a construction worker. <laughs> I, I like, I just. Uh, Maybe again, she has a YMCA fetish, like a village people thing. And she's like, it's, listen, before <laughs> I go, I'd like a cop, a biker, a construction worker, a Native American. <laughs> <laughs> oh man oh my god is, is there a word is there a word for something that sounds like a slur but isn't uh a euphemism is it wouldn't be it sounds like but isn't asking sounds like a GPT. slur but isn't sorry marshall asking chat gpt asking chat gpt <laughs> as we as we speak because I I have Romeo, my new beautiful puppy. Mm. Very difficult, by the way. Loves to bite my ankles, draw blood. He's beautiful, but puppies are really freaking hard. And I talked to him in that like, ooh, cutie, cutie puppy voice. And I said to him last night, I'm like, oh, who's a cute little bone licker? And there's something about bone licker that made it seem like I was calling my dog a slur. I don't know if that's just me, but I thought to myself, you know, I'm sorry. Calling you a bone licker wasn't nice even though he was licking a bone. So I just thought to myself, is there a word for that? Interesting. It does that. It sounds like you're calling him a monster truck, like a bone licker. Coming yeah, it down. doesn't sound nice. The bone yeah. licker's going to crush some cars. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been to a monster truck? No, uh, situation? I dream no. of it. We should go. 
I love Americana, babe. I want to go to I want to go to a bull riding thing, APB, yeah. babe. Is that what it's called? American bull riding? We're go, we're, ABR? You're coming with me next year. We're going back to Fort Worth to the rodeo. Oh, you love it. I want to go to a rodeo. I want to go... I want to go to Hershey, Pennsylvania. <laughs> I want to do it all. I want to go to Bush Gardens. Been. Yeah, Bush Gardens. Are they still around? Not sure. Not sure. No, probably not. I want to go to Mount done. Rushmore. Ooh, I'm in. Never been. Yeah. I want to see Alaska. I want to storm the Capitol. Yes. Jan- right? Jan 6 is coming up and it's a big election. <laughs> Woo! I wonder if there, I, I'm sure that, uh, this is such a dumb subject because there's just going to be, <laughs> we're going to be riddled in the comments. People will be like, don't you know? And I'm like, yes, I know you're an expert on January 6th. But I wonder if there were like people on the outside of the Capitol, Capitol going like, do we really, should we? <laughs> like, was there ever, was there anyone who was a voice of reason who was like, think about it? I'm sure that people got cold feet. I'm sure. (laughs) I'm sure. They're all like revved up. They had like three Red Bulls. They're starting to sprint in. They're sweating. They're like, all right, fine. And they rip off the Band-Aid. Or I'm sure that there are people that started to rip that Band-Aid, felt those long hairs and were like, ah, I'm out of here. I'm sure that there were people that left. Yeah. Like there were people like they're, they're like, and then there's one friend who's like, listen, I'm in. Like, let's go. Let's go steal a lectern. And like, you know draw on the walls of Nancy Pelosi's office, or I have a really lovely reservation at this um, seafood place (laughs) with the stone crab. We're right by Maryland. The stone crab will knock your socks off. So yes, I say let's go steal a lectern or let's go get some clam chowder. Yeah. I love, I used to love a clam chowder before, before I gave off, tore off seafood, loved a clam chowder. Loved. Haven't, I haven't had a clam 20 years, 20 years since I had a clam. Ugh. Delicious. And I prefer anybody who prefers, this is a red flag. Again, you're on a date. You have two options, New England and Manhattan. You pick Manhattan, red flag. I would all up that one more. I'd say anyone who turns down a bread bowl. Ooh, delicious. Right? Delicious. Yeah. And for those that don't know, I'm sure you know, Manhattan clam chowder or red sauce. New England clam chowder, yes. basically clams fettuccine Alfredo. Unbelievable. So heavy, so delicious. So good. And yes, a bread, a bread bowl, fantastic. Are those oyster crackers? God, we're back to talking about food. Gorgeous. And why is the only major piece of, of, of flatware a bread bowl? Let, there's no bread plates. There's no, there's no bread forks. Bread fork, bread, bread fork, bread fork would be tough, but a bread plate I'm in for. I'm totally in for a bread Why plate. Why not? I don't know. I don't know. They should make it. Absolutely. It's kind of like the, the pizza from Domino's where you can pull off the crust. Yeah, sure. Which by the way is, which by the way is pretty dumb because then how do you eat the pizza? You rip off all the crust. How do you hold your pizza? You just, yeah. Then you got to fold, you got to fold it from the middle. But and then you have no crust left. I don't think anyone at Domino's headquarters is worried about your dining experience with their pizza. I think their their entire goal is sell more pizza. Yeah, yeah, sell more pizza. Oh, sell more pizza. Th- I might be misspeaking here, so let's see. But I think Domino's has a Christian town that they created in Florida. Hold on. Really? I'm going to Google Domino's Christian World, and let's see what happened. World Florida. I think so. Or maybe just the owner is pretty devout. Do you have to be Catholic <laughs> to live in Ave Maria, Florida? Oh, wow. Wow. Well, I'll ask another question. Do you have to be Jewish to live in Ave Long Island? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Where is Ave Maria, Florida? Let me guess. Naples? It says not okay. It says nine years. How Domino's Pizza Chain's founder established Ave Maria in Florida. Ave Maria... A planned community outside of Naples. Wow, wow. what a call. <laughs> what a call, man. Oh, I love having a brilliant there, co-host. There's, there's something about the west side of Florida that just screams, we don't like Jews. 
It, it opened in 2007 based on the vision of former Domino CEO Tom Ma- uh, Monaghan. It, in, in launching it, Monaghan said the town would run on Catholic ideologies and shun birth control and pornography. While he took back the statement, some say the community re- remains religious centric and some are calling it unconstitutional. The developers of the town have have ambitious plans of high-end homes, top-notch infrastructure, and schools. There'll be 4,000 acres of land, 11,000 homes, and as of 2015, 750 homes have already been built. Isn't that fun? And at the center of the town is the Ave Maria Oratory, the only church in the community. Is there a Domino's? Good question. Uh, or is it just made by the creator of Domino's and actually has nothing to do with Domino's? You know that there's, I mean, no, there's a pizza. There's got to be, there's got to be Domino's at the church. <laughs> there's a Little Caesars right next door. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty wild, huh? Yeah, that's nuts. That's nuts. Speaking of nuts, I want to get into my what are you nuts because it's also about food. Please. And we're just not going to escape food today. This woman with her speak pipe saying that we don't stop talking about food. Honestly, my brain could only go to food Mm. the whole time. Yes. The whole time. My mom sent me an article. My mom periodically will send me weird news and say, Ben, I think this is what are you nuts? And mom, this is what are you nuts? Yes. Have you ever heard, have you ever heard, have you ever heard of meat glue? No. Tell me more. Meat glue is something that is legal in the United States. Mm. It's banned in the UK. And what meat glue is, is you can take, Josh, pieces of cubed meat, take a piece of uh, ribeye, a piece of filet, a piece of knee, a piece of shoulder, whatever it is, cubes, push them into like basically a meatball of meat. But you ask, how do we get it to look like a steak? Meat glue. Pour on the meat glue. Mix the cubes together. Take some saran wrap. Cover it, put it in the shape that you want. You want it in the shape of a steak? Come back in a couple hours? Steak. I, How vile is that? What are you nuts? And now I'm thinking to myself, I've been to a, a cheap restaurant. I've been to a restaurant where the meat has felt a little cuby, you know? Like the ugh. steak wasn't perfect. Marshall, are and you now I'm thinking to myself, I am. Have, I eaten, have I eaten meat cube? Have I eaten meat glue cubed steaks? Fucking disgusting and should be illegal. It should be illegal. That's nuts. I don't know anybody who would be like sweet uh, meat glue. But yeah, I think they do it with a lot of things. Like plenty of things are like mashed and pushed together. They do it with fish, imitation crab and whatnot. They do it with, I think they're, I think they're doing it. And by the way, and I love like an impossible meat or a beyond burger, but it's all chemicals. Like, let's just not kid ourselves. Like, I don't think there's any way out of this thing unless you just eat pretty basic. There's just, but I guess, I guess the difference between a steak and the chicken nugget, I know when I'm going to get a chicken nugget, that there's probably like a piece of beak a little tooth, some knee. It's ground up, right? You're eating, it's it's ground up. You throw everything but the kitchen sink into that nugget, right? But when I eat a chicken tender, a tender, when I eat a beautiful piece of steak, there's something about the sanctity of meat. Title of the episode, Sanctity of Meat. Yes. There's something about the sanctity of meat that I'm expecting to get a, a, a piece of meat that came from one singular cow. Right. The sanctity of meat. Just saying. Yeah. The sanctity of meat. Well, uh, my Woody and Nuts is recently on my flight to beautiful Edmonton, Canada. And you know I'm bullish on Canada. You know, it's... it's you are. It's one of my favorite places. I'm ready to move there at any moment. Um, so I fall asleep, morning flight, right? And I feel tap, 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 tap. Now I'm, I'm feeling a poke. Right mm. now, I'm feeling something jammed into my side. I wake up. I remove not only my mouth guard, but my night mask, mm. and it's the lovely flight attendant going, "Will you be dining with us this morning?" Ah, no. Well, I, what? I was, I was asleep. Oh, oh, should I wake up for some imitation egg omelet that's going to give me IBS after this? 
oh, no, I think I'll pass, and thank you for waking me up. What are you, nuts? If I'm asleep, I'm asleep. It's airplane morning, food. Morning flight? Morning flight? 7 a.m. How far were you going? Three hours. Horrible. Crazy. There's an unwritten rule. It's probably a written rule. Morning flight... They don't turn on any of the lights. They keep it dark. Mm. People tend to be quieter on those flights. You typically don't hear many kids. Like people aren't bringing their kids on the 6 a.m. flight. Usually. Yes, usually. True. And uh, flight attendants are certainly not waking patrons to see if they want some shit snack. I hell no. I could not believe it. Now, if if we were, you know, third course into a wonderful dining, you know, transcontinental flight and they're busting out those beautiful fresh baked cookies. Sure. Wake me up. If, if you fell asleep between the entree and the dessert, she can wake you up and ask if you want a cookie. Right. I agree. I agree. But otherwise, this is completely, completely unacceptable. But knowing you... The people don't know this. I try and share as much of this as I can. The people don't know that you are truly too kind for words no, to everyone. I, I'm, I'm a, so I'm what did a you devil. Actually, I'm a devil, what did you a, What did you actually say to her? Nothing. Obviously nothing. You're like, oh, no, thank you so much for asking me. I'm good. Uh, I said, no, but can I help you with any of the serving? <laughs> <laughs> I just, I couldn't believe it. Um, speaking of, of delicious things, did you hear this? And this is a barn burner. McDonald's will sell Krispy Kreme donuts at all of Whoa. its U.S. locations by the end of 2026. Krispy Kreme donuts is going to be in all 13,500 locations across the U.S. The fast food giant announced on Tuesday... It'll take about two and a half years to add Krispy Kreme sugary treats to McDonald's nationwide, um, but it's a partnership. And whoa, is that unbelievable? Whoa, yeah. two things. First, good for Krispy Kreme. Yes, I feel like they. I feel like they had one leg left. They were hobbling everywhere, about to fall over, you and think? all of a sudden. Oh yeah, I don't. I don't think the Krispy Kreme was huh. was doing was doing great. Huh. I like. I think that they were falling off. I think the donut shop in general is having a tough time. Sure, the Dunkin' Donut because they really evolved, right? Dunkin' Donuts, breakfast food, coffee, all this stuff. Krispy Kreme just a donut shop, and not your mom and pop's donut shop. Just a donut shop. Mm. The best donut, I think so, but just a donut shop for McDonald's to give them thirteen thousand stores. It's a big, big, big business boost yes. for Krispy Kreme. So good for them. Wow. The amount of heart attacks in the U.S. is going to skyrocket. <laughs> it's going to go nuts. But also, it's going to be fascinating to see if they start getting real creative about the collabs. I mean, yes. is there one day going to be a Big Mac with a nestled glazed donut instead of that third piece of middle bread? Or the glazed donut is the bread. Right. That's what I'm saying. Wow. Yeah, totally. Can totally. You, can I get an Egg McMuffin on a glazed? Oof. Holy crap. You know they're thinking That's, about that at McDonald's right now. Yeah, they are. They are. Wow. That is that is something else. But you know what? High people, high people everywhere will never be the same. And <laughs> yeah, marijuana fat, users. And, and, and fat people everywhere will also never be the same. Can you imagine marijuana Reddit right now? Yeah, going nuts. But you know what? I got to can respect the game and this is america at its best right novo nordisk eli Lilly, they're having a parade all these anti-obesity medicines the walmart stock is down because people aren't buying much food you know what you know what mcdonald's goes hold my soft drink they say hold my no problem i got i got something for them we'll keep them fat we'll keep them nice and fat we got this right Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You are, yeah, that's the that's the only explanation. Hold my beer. We got this. Hold my belly. Hold my belly. We got this. We're gonna we got this. Yeah. I'm gonna give them something that's nine thousand calories. Good luck, Ozempic. Good luck, yeah. Munjaro. Yeah. It's just funny. You go from the Mick plant, that's probably their last innovation, to the Krispy Kreme. Do you think Munjaro is living in your <laughs> cells, in your body? <laughs> <laughs> and it can't be it's it can't be Munjaro, right? It's Munjaro. 
<laughs> Do you think Munjaro is living in the cells in your body and they're just kicking back like it's spring break and they're just kicking fat's ass and then someone <laughs> eats a glazed <laughs> Krispy Kreme quarter pounder and it's like a tidal wave <laughs> coming over the beaches. It's like Normandy. Josh. <laughs> Josh. Wait, 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 wait. The glazed quarter pounder with cheese is a happy meal. <laughs> what toy does it come with? I'll start. <laughs> a little caricature of a 400 pound man. And as you keep buying it, it gives you things that he can wear. So one is little Velcro shoes. The other is a little hat with a propeller. <laughs> The other is a seatbelt extender. <laughs> Did you say a scooter already? You got to collect them all. Oh, my. It's a scooter. Double wide oh. Air Monarch Nikes. <laughs> <laughs> Triple E New Balances. A Tommy Bahama shirt. Sweatpants. Gold Bond powder. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Oh, my uh, God. I mean, shout out. Shout, mu you know what? Much respect to McDonald's and the Krispy Kreme organization. And yet there is another story that I think is worth mentioning, that Jennifer Lopez's go-to bodega order gets ruthlessly mocked by New Yorkers. Bronx and the hood are tired, they say. Uh, I guess in her new movie, she talks about the things that she used to order when she was living in the Bronx. And in footage, she says that she'd go to a bodega and order a ham and cheese on a roll, a small bag of chips, and an orange drink. Adding about the unspecified drink, if you know, you know. Hey, Ben, do you know? Fanta? 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 It's Fanta, right? Okay, wrong. <laughs> but I don't blame you because I forget that you are on the younger side of millennial. I so for Orangina Orangina? Nice. I, I think I, I put some respect on that answer. I think let's first of all, let's High C. High C wor worthy. Where uh, Fanta wasn't a thing. Fanta's always been a thing, but I don't remember it ever being at, in bodegas in like the 80s and 90s. To me, there was mm -hmm. two orange drinks that were like name brand. There was Sunkissed and there was yes. Crush. And those yes, were like both. Yes. standard yes. orange sodas. Crush also made a beautiful grape soda that was wow. Um, then, of course, you had like quarter water, like you had like those off brand, like 50 cent, like we're normally like a, a Sunkiss back in my day, a 20 ounce plastic bottle of, of Sunkiss was was one dollar or like a buck 25. But then they had this off brand stuff called like Bahama Punch or just rando shit. And that was 50 cents. But like people are like, we, we actually don't know the orange drink. And also the ham and cheese on a roll, like to me, a bodega order is like a bacon, egg and cheese on like a Kaiser bun done only the way a bodega can or like a chopped cheese. Like, I don't. It's interesting. It's certainly a lazy order. Also, what does she have a dry? There's nothing on it. Ham, cheese, no mayo, no mustard, dry. It's crazy. Like if, you, if you're not commenting that you're lubing it up you're probably having it dry Lube it. and that's that's nuts that's totally nuts but i don't know if i'm up in arms it's, it is what it is i expect nothing less nothing more from her i don't expect much from j-lo at all though you halted me <sighs> and now i'm gonna say okay fine okay look that was a little harsh i'm not gonna say that you know who's really cool though who? you know who's really cool who? reba Reba McIntyre. Thank you guys really? for listening to the Good Guys really? podcast available on all podcast platforms. We're talking Apple, Amazon. Give us five stars in the podcast app. Uh, what else? Rate, review, and subscribe. Your reviews really help us rate it. Next episode, we're going to do a bunch of speak pipes. We love you all, and we love Reba the most. And watch Reba, the sitcom from 2003 to 2007. It's fantastic. <laughs> Great. The most random person ever. <laughs> that was great.